Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com. My name's Matthew Whiting and over the next five hours I'm going to be your personal guide walking you and talking you through the levels command. Now you're probably already thinking, does it really take five hours to tell me about levels? Well, yes it does and no it doesn't. It all really depends on how far you want to take it. If you'd prefer to pick out specific topics then that's fine. Each video is its own tutorial, so it's not crucial you watch them in sequence. On the other hand though, each video builds up in complexity and information. So the further you go, the more you're going to gain as we spend time not just looking at the bare bones of the Levels dialog box, but also looking at best practices as well as a host of other powerful features Photoshop has to offer in the way of non-destructive editing, basic masking and luminance blending to give you maximum control over your edits. So let's start with the basics. What actually is the Levels command and what does it do? Well, we're going to be exploring those questions in abundant detail all through this series, but for now let's just say this. With Levels we can directly shift the brightness values of an image on a composite or a channel by channel basis, meaning we can adjust and improve the contrast, the luminance and the colours of an image by editing the highlights, the midtones and the shadows independently of each other. And if some of these terms seem a little baffling at the moment, I urge you to stick around. Things will seem a lot easier when we look at the histogram in a couple of tutorials time. In the meantime here though, I've told you a little about what Levels does and how it works. Now I'm going to show you a quick demo just so you can see where we're heading with this series. I've got a photograph open on screen, well actually it's three photographs, the first one being a photograph of the Statue of Liberty taken from the Liberty Island Ferry, and the name of this one is the Statue Before, but the entire name should actually be the Statue Before the Levels Command. Now we could have a conversation about what's wrong with this photograph, but I'm going to save that for a little later on in this training. For now I'm going to switch the image over to the next photograph here entitled the levels after and hopefully you're going to see a huge difference and that difference is one that we've made by using levels right here inside of Photoshop and just in case you haven't guessed it yet the whole name of this image should be the statue after the levels command and by the way these are by no means looking the best they could look all I've done here is added a number of levels adjustments in a real approximate way just to give you an example of what the levels command is all about. Next I'm going to switch over to the third and final image here called the statue burning skies. More of a creative and dramatic effect this time. All that's going on with this photograph is we've loaded much more tolerance into the red channel when we've completed our adjustments using the levels dialog box. And I've also got to say that like almost everything inside Photoshop, Levels is a product of time. The more time you're willing to spend on a photograph, the better it's going to end up looking. And as I said, I haven't spent too much time on this particular image, or any of these three images for that matter. I just wanted to show you exactly where we're heading with the series and exactly what the Levels command is all about. Now all through this training I'm going to be using Photoshop CS3. But you could also follow along with earlier versions of the software, including Elements. And I'd say that over 80% of what I'm going to be talking about and what I'm going to be showing you is applicable to any version of Photoshop that gives you access to the Levels command. The 20% that isn't possible is going to be the bits where we venture into, say, the Lab mode and 16 bits per channel mode, for example, which aren't available in Photoshop Elements, unfortunately. Also, whilst we're here in the introduction stages of this series, it's a good opportunity to talk about saving our edited images. The best advice I can give you here is to never ever save over the original. Anytime I'm working with a photograph here in these tutorials, I'm going to be working with a duplicated version. Or if I'm working with the original, then I'll be saving it out as a new document. It doesn't have to be a PSD file, although I certainly would recommend saving it as a PSD file until you get used to what's happening here inside Photoshop. But you can also save it out as a JPEG if you wanna, for example. But just in case you're ultimately not happy with the final result and you wanna come back and re-edit it at some stage, then nine times out of 10, it's easier to work on the original file than it is to readjust a flat image that's been edited. 
and you'll find out exactly why a little later on in the series, especially in the video where we look at the 16 bits per channel mode. For now I'd advise you to save, as I say before, as a PSD file or at least a layered TIFF file until you get used to the saving structure here inside of Photoshop. It's definitely not a good idea to save over your original format. I just want to make that clear right from the get go here. Okay, coming up in the next video, we're going to check out the easiest way to adjust our images, and that's with the auto commands. Once again, I really hope you enjoy this training. Let me know what you think as we're progressing through the videos, and make sure you hit that subscribe button on the freephotoshop.com website for all the news and the latest free video tutorials as they become available here at freephotoshop.com. Well, I think we're ready to go. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.